welcome back to another episode of Farming Life at LaForge. For those of you who are new here, my name is Laura, and this channel is all about our farming lives here in France. you'll get to see um, a bit of the nursery. So the nursery is actually old pig sheds. I'll show you them now in a second. And then the next few weeks, we'll have a lot going on. So as that explained in the Q&A, we have the herd test coming up and we also have scanning the cattle and the goats. So basically, mom and dad are over on the second farm now. Um, I guess I can put you down. So they're over on the second farm now. They're moving around cattle. And um, tomorrow morning I should probably, when it's a bit brighter out, hopefully I'll get to bring you around and show you the wash system. So again I'll show you the wash system here in the cattle sheds on this farm, on the second farm, explain a bit about how it is, how it was when we came, how it's set up now, and yeah, the system here um, that was already in place, we still have it today, um, and we found it quite interesting. When we first arrived it was something that we'd never seen before, so we thought it'd be interesting to show you guys. So that's on today's video and a big thank you to everybody who sent in all the questions for the questions and answers and thank you to all the new subscribers who have joined i hope you guys do enjoy all the content now i will stop rambling on and get some work done i think we have to go get some work done jess <laughs> okay so now we're in the pig shed or the nursery and so basically when we got into goats, um, we wanted to just use what we had and invest as little as possible basically, or I should say mom and dad because I was too young to know what I was doing. Um, but yeah, we used, so for the nursery we used this pig shed. So the pig shed is actually very good for the nursery, there's onions on the ground. Mom read somewhere that onions keep away rats and as it's currently an idle shed, well that's what we want to do. Um, so this is an old piggery, so it's all concrete, um, so down here would have been the troughs, you just pour in there so you don't have to put your hands in with the pigs, they probably bite them off. So it is four pens, the great thing about this is that it is quite small, um, as you can see here, the walls are very thick, so when it looks cold now, just because it's empty, but when we have all the um, hot lamps on, it's a perfect shed for them because also with the concrete there's next to no draft or no draft really and then the ceiling up above me um, and then upstairs here is actually where we store all the grain so there is a nice big loft above us um, so yeah the shed actually stays quite warm when you have all the lamps on and have all the kids in here so it's four pens the lighting is quite bad so it's all lined now and basically as you can see just there around the edges well, we're just going to whitewash that because that's the bit where the kid goats will be at and it's the bit that's dirty. The top part doesn't really need to be whitewashed at all. Um, so we're just not going to waste time doing that. It's not the nicest looking shed, but it definitely does the job. So now I need to stop chatting, start working and yeah, get these ready for the goats. And lime is just going everywhere when it comes to kid goats. You cannot be clean enough when it comes to disinfecting. So now all the walls are painted in here. Um, they're still drying out a bit as you can see around the edges. But when they dry out, they should be basically just all white. So it's just nice to have them. Um, they still don't look very clean on the camera, but it's just nice to have them all clean. Um, just makes it a nice place to work and it's nice to see the little kids when they arrive with nice clean white walls and we will have fresh straw down as well for them. So that's it for in here, um, we still have a few jobs left to tip up and do, but for today the four pens are um, whitewashed, so I got what I needed to do done, 
I will take you over now, show you mum and dad, they're over on the second farm, so as I said, they're getting ready for the scanning. Um, as for the kid goats, we will do a full episode on um, getting them, so you'll see them, we'll explain a little bit about more about what's going on with the kid goats, and we'll also show you the feeding system that we have, so we have an automatic feeding system, and then also hand bookish rearing. Um, but you'll get to see lots of cute little kid goats, we're looking forward to it. So I'll pass you over now to mum and dad, they're going around the second farm so they'll show you the last of cattle that we are going to be scanning. And then just after that I will bring you up to the big shed and I'll show you the wash system. So I mentioned before that I'm going to show you that. So it's a different system over there that we had never seen before. Um, so I think it could be really interesting for you guys to see as well. Is it recording or not? Yeah. Okay. Here she's doing his efforts. He did well. There they are, all fighting with hordes on them. They won't be fighting next week. And I'll never go in here with them. There's the young boy. These have to be scanned tomorrow. So, there they are. Young bull head is going well there for the winter. Then I go over here now. Go back a lot. Come on. Up. Go. So, they're not bad for under two. But they don't have to be tested. Now you see the heifer caught in the barriers. There's the other side. I don't know if you can see them in the dark. That's a small heifer there. Oh, mind, I was humming and hawing about putting the bull with it. Did well. Uh, this is another big old barn here. And it's just handy for that job. These cattle are just have to go on in, but they're going out as soon as the hair test is over. Uh, the better off outside. The weather's not that bad. And they're only on hay the whole year. Now I hope that one is not in cash, she's a bit small. At the end of the world. Uh, this was their cabin shed in the other farm. You had two cabin pins there and two cabin pins there. We've, we've calved a couple of cows over here. Uh, we just had some time to move them, but uh, we kept an eye on them. So, 10 cows calved over here this year. And uh, we only had to come over once at night. Uh, we hope to be using this shed a bit more next year because we're still raising the numbers. It's a fine big long shed. It's 14 bays long. Now the roof is insulated, but it's getting a bit on the lapidated side. Uh, we had heifers going in and out there. So the heifers you see me with taking the horns off, uh, the wailings or yearnings. They're coming over here, and one bunch can come in and out this door, and the other bunch can come in and out that door. And there's water and all there. Uh, so they just come in and out with their onies, and we just put a lot of hay here, and feed them, and uh, if I have to do what with them, it's no bother to close the door. So uh, them young heifers then when they come over, they just have to be uh, dosed. So, I'll show you the bolus when I go back home. Uh, we'll give them a, a, a bolus. Uh, it's not vitamins, it's a bolus for dosing. Then, uh, give them the bolus, a bolus for, for the worms, now before they go out, in maybe a month's time, even though they will be going in and out of the shed. 
But before they go to grass, we give them this bolus. And uh, it releases every uh, four to five weeks. So it lasts for uh, the whole summer when they're out. So I find that very handy as well, not to be bringing in cattle. So we only have to go out with the blower in and blow the treatment for the flies. And we shouldn't have to bring them in at all of it. So I'm going to show you the other heifers up here because just showing you this now because when we're scanning and that we might just have time to be hanging around with the camera. So here's another group. There's actually cows and heifers here. Uh, there's some to be scanned and we know there's some in calf. And then there was a few that didn't go in calf last year and we're giving them a second shot. So there's 28 there. And uh, there's another heifer with the horns. So we're just uh, further testing that the no cattle ran up the, the crush at all early. They'll be all locked in. And uh, hopefully it's a great job by her. So that's it. It's an old barn, lovely trusses on it. I'll show you them again. Uh, we intend to let them all out the whole lot of it again. Of course, uh, they're okay there now. They're nice and dry. But they're going back out again after testing, except the ones that the three or four there will be calving in March. So uh, we'll bring them back home. They were all heifers last year. We find that the older cows go back in calf quicker than the younger cows. So these are just on hay. Uh, it's a bit mucky here where they're eating because they can lie in at the back. It's 14 bale on shed. Uh, the cow before is used to just fatten cattle here. But uh, that's it there. Uh, they're all, they'll be all coming back to the other farm now in the next few weeks and some of the other cattle will be coming back. So these are more here. Shoot the calf in the same shed. So these are our heifers. The shed, I think, in the whole lot. This is the solar panel shed. So, hopefully, they're all in calf tomorrow. So, this is the other bunch of heifers, and uh, there's a part near limousine. Uh, we, we might have to put bedding around here. We'll just see what it's like to walk in. I don't know, so. so there they are. That bull there now is going back. Is that bull able to get his head out? Yeah. He's very empty. He's very empty. Okay. Okay, so it is the next day. So now I'm going to explain to you about the wash system here on the farm in France. So when we first arrived on the farm, one of the main things that we noticed was that out in the fields there was no actual piping and set up for water. Um, so they used to draw a lot of water. So when we came on the farm, there was already a water bowser. And basically when we were looking into the reasons why, people who were renting farms just found that 
they're not it's no pointless putting in the time putting in the effort um so it's pointless putting in the effort for installing all the big water troughs out in the field and piping them all up and for the owners of the farm when we asked them basically they just said that they have to go look at the cattle every day anyways so they might as well draw water but it's a very big job and um, so that was one of our first big main jobs when we arrived on the farm so on this farm they had a really big long hose for nearby fields and then the water bowser for drawing water to fields further away they only had about four or five troughs on the whole farm and basically when they'd move the cattle from field to field they'd move the trough with it so it was a bit of a setup that we didn't like so one of the biggest jobs as i said was getting the water in place especially in drought weather they would drink a lot of water um so yeah so then that was the job that dad did himself he did it with the digger and so now all the fields are hooked up hosed up with water however in the sheds the system that they had was actually a very good system so i'm going to show it to you guys now i'm going to show you around the sheds um so this is again the big shed we've already shown you around the pens so now i'm going to show you the wash system it is basically a system based on gravity and it is really well done so that it doesn't freeze during the winter which would be the main problem because it does get down to really cold temperatures right so to show you guys around the shed first off so it's a system that works very well for um a straw bedded sheds it wouldn't work too well on slats because well i suppose you could but the fact that it's underground stops the pipes from freezing so, so these are the troughs here so the trough is basically a big concrete um pipe and then in the middle of it there is a two inch hose coming up through um a two inch pipe that is underground so then there is one of them troughs in every pen one or two troughs so yeah that system so that system was already in place when we did when we bought the farm in the first big shed so the wooden shed there so when it came time to add on this shed we used the exact same system just because it worked so well so now i'll just go and show you the pump so here we have the two water troughs so these are two big reserve wash troughs because they're about thousand two thousand liters and um, just set up a ball cork and basically these troughs here are level with the concrete troughs in the shed so as long as there's great flow of water in here um they all have each individual pipes going out to each trough so that makes it there's always great flow of water going to the trough um, so there's never a lack in water. So that's them there. So this is our insulated shed here in the middle. And then there is a big reserve tank there as well. So this tank here actually collects water from the roof, the water from the e sheds. You can see up here. So the top pipe is the water coming in and then the bottom pipe there going down that's the overflow so if there's too much rain like there would be in the winter time it'll overflow but for the summer then if um there's no rain so we do get bad drives over here if there's no rain then there is a ball cork on the bottom there so that'll then shut off this and it will basically bring in the the water from the well then this here is the water pump so this is the this pump will pump up the wash from the wells and it'll also pump the wash to the rest of the farm so the goat shed wool shed and the pig shed that i was painting earlier that is all um supplied to the well washer from here but they wouldn't use up as much water as the cattle sheds would the cattle would drink a lot of water especially in the summertime if we have any bunches in so that's this shed here um, i'm going to bring in now with dad we're going to show you the little shed at the end of the house so the backups and then dad will also show you the um setup over in the other farm so in the second farm it's a different setup again so just before i bring you down to um with dad we have these trough here so they're just the ball trough so these are meant so that they're not freezing um we have about three of these on the farm we don't find them very very good because younger cattle have a hard time pushing on the ball and if you take the balls out well then um uh, if you're bedding them with the the blower then it just clogs up so we don't find them very useful in that sense however we do keep them we do use them for going out and around so that's why dad has them on big concrete blocks that he can just pick them up with the loader 
And if we have cattle out in the field um, in freezing weather, uh, if there's a bunch of cows or anything, we just bring out one of these and then we can hook up instead of the usual trot, we'll put in one of these so that it doesn't freeze during the winter. So they are good for that, but they are just very expensive um, and we don't find them particularly good for in the sheds. Okay, so here is uh, our kind of backup system. If uh, the man to us above her Laura was showing you, uh, packs up. So uh, we we'll have a pump here that sucks out of the lake. So if the other one goes down, we open this and shut off this valve. So uh, it's not uh, sucking out the other well. So then this keeps uh, everything going. That's to the sheds and that's to the fields. So we can shut off all them as well. So then we have the mains water coming in here. Uh, we only ever used it once in case there's a power cut uh, and we have no uh, electricity to work the pumps. We just connect that in there. Um, that's the mains there. And we have a reducer uh, on it there because there's awful pressure in the mains. Uh, that's our three electric fences for the home farm, actually. So we'll have it split up into three and uh, if the, if uh, some place goes down, with, if deer are jumping through it or anything, uh, the hole has not gone down. So it's uh, handier that way, with all the electric fences. So uh, that's there. Uh, that's the old bread oven in there. This was for all the, the good women of days gone by, they did all the work. Oh, very funny. And uh, well, obviously, we don't use it. That was my father's turf bar. We used to cut turf with a slain years ago. Uh, this is kind of Emily's garden shed as well. She stores her, some of her tools in here. So, and it's, it's a timber roof, but on top of that, there's clay and then there's carrot or the right carrot hot tiles. So, this place never freezes at all, no matter what. Uh, and they're very big thick stone walls. Yeah. You can't see the width fully there. So uh that <coughs> that's it here. So you can never have enough of water over here because uh with the hot weather and things like that. So we just do be well prepared that way. Uh I put them in insula that insulation on it, but there's actually no need in here. So that's all in here. Uh you've seen the other shed in that. So uh, that's it. That's the, the tree that the kins is coming out of where you are, and they're just lightning conductors. Uh, we do get a lot of thunder and lightning in the winter or summer, so uh, since we put them up, we don't have problems. And it suits here to have, we have all the earth for the lake around it, so that it's always damp. And once you have good damp conditions, you'll have no problems with uh, your electric fences. So that's it. Ciao. <laughs> so now Dad is going to go over and he will show you the wash shot system in the second farm. Now, here's the drinkers over here. They're heated drinkers. They work well, but they're very expensive. I prefer that job at the, in the other farm. So there's a little transformer up here. Show you. There it is. You plug in that, switch it on, and it heats up. There's two drinking troughs in each pit, and it heats them up so they don't freeze. Uh, no fault, but only it's so expensive. So as for the goat shed, uh, I'd love to try and show you the water shop, but the goats think that I met something over here, so they're trying to get in before me. There we go. So that's how the goats drink. 
And basically, instead of these troughs here that we have, um, we're looking at getting into some heated wash troughs for the goats. So there's a Dutch guy over the road who um, he milks goats. And he says that the lukewarm water in the winter time is actually very good for them. So the system that's over on the second farm, we're looking at getting it for here. But that is something that we'll get into again. Um, we'll have to look into it and see what the prices are. But yeah. So that is it for the wash system. So that's that for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In next episode, we are doing our herd test very soon. And we are also scanning the cattle. And so a few busy days ahead of us. We'll try and get as much footage as we can, but it will be all hands on deck, so might not get to film everything, um, but I'll try my best to set up the cameras where I can. And I hope you guys enjoy the next episode. Don't forget, if you do enjoy this episode, to give it a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And if you want to see more episodes like this, don't forget to subscribe below. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.